Ableism hinges on a two-pronged idea that physical differences are inherently a sign of core health and that physical differences should be fixed if at all possible. There is a typical body that is normal, Ableism says. We should strive to have that body. We will be happiest when we do. Equity pushes back against ableism. Equity empowers the idea that physical differences are simply a part of life. Our bodies, however they look, how to we are, equity says. Our bodies don't have to be normal to be valuable. We will be happiest when we learn their full value. In the spring of 2019, I was approached by a production company to be featured as a subject in a mainstream television series on a major TV network. My experiences expose the ways in which ableism norms can operate to create and to foster a limiting narrative about disabled and disfigured people. It's a type of narrative that gets consumed by mass audiences of viewers who are not disabled. Ultimately, affirming their great fortune, having been healthy and normal, while perpetuating a preference for normal bodies, bodies that may not look like mine and yours. My goal in this talk is to share three common pitfalls to working with mainstream entertainment productions through the lessons I've had to learn the hard way. Any personal references are not meant to single out any one particular entertainment company or property. It's meant to educate you so that when you are approached to quote unquote share your story, you are empowered to make wiser decisions about just how much your story could cost you and whether the opportunity is worth the risks. All right, here are the three common pitfalls of sharing your story with Hollywood. Number one, exploitation. Number two, manipulation. And number three, disempowerment. Now let's break each of these down. First, exploitation. Within the words, entertainment and industry are two seemingly self-evident concepts that we should spend a little time unpacking if we want to understand the pitfall of exploitation. First, the word entertainment. To entertain means to provide enjoyment. In other words, pleasure or happiness. From the time of Aristotle, Happiness was conceptualized in at least two ways. Hedonism and eudaimonia. Hedonistic pleasure encompasses all the entertainment narratives people watch just because they seem fun or exciting. While eudaimonic pleasure encompasses all the entertainment narratives people watch to feel better. They gain insight or engage in therapeutic reflection as they compare and contrast themselves to the characters they see on their TV screens. While we media researchers typically discuss these motivations in terms of fictional content, it's important for you to remember that for a person watching your story from their TV over dinner after work, or coming across your story while at the doctor's office for a common cold, you, are their entertainment. Next, the word industry. Industry encompasses any economic activity based on the use of labor to manufacture raw materials into a product. You, your life, your experiences, your pain and your triumphs, your personality, your thoughts, feelings, in actions. When you're working with Hollywood, you become 
their raw material that others call creatives or producers, editors, and entertainment executives use to shape what you share of your lived experiences into a product called content. This content is then marketed, sold, and distributed for profit. It's all going to be used to create a version of your story that they can sell to make money. Not only that, when you share your story within the entertainment industry, you're working. Your physical energy, your mental energy, and your subject matter expertise as the only person who knows your story best. It's all labor that you put into creating this profitable content. When my family and I finished filmed for a particular TV series, we shot for over one year of our lives, a total of nine months. As just one example of labor, during the shoot, certain days are set for interviews. This is the footage within a nonfiction content that producers and editors will use to structure the episode or the film that they then decide to tell about your life. I am asked to shoot and then reshoot my master interview, which is at least two hours long. Those times, I'm required to be vulnerable. I'm asked these interview questions about all the challenges I faced to share and reshare traumatic life experiences, including pain and suffering. The emotional intensity of it all completely drains me. I can't do anything else but sleep during those days after I shoot. My parents and my younger sister are also interviewed in our living room for several hours. They are asked to relive painful moments of their journey with my illness. My dad, he bursts into tears when he's asked to describe how he felt having to change my wounds or my face after a surgery complication left me where, with a hole where my face should have been. I had the urge not to burst into tears, to tell my daddy not to cry. At some point, completely overwhelmed, I get up and leave the room. It's important that you realize that any production crew, no matter how nice or kind they are to you and your family, they are not nearly recording your pain and suffering. In shooting and reshooting your emotional life moments, in asking you to tell and then retell these events, they themselves become a source of re-traumatization, even if unintentionally. These kinds of interviews are not exception to some rule. They are most often simply standard requirements when you are asked to share your story with an entertainment company. So to avoid exploitation, there's a key phrase that you and your family should learn and use in your conversations with any entertainment entity. The words are mutually beneficial. <laughs> the use of your story, your physical and mental labor, your time and your subject matter expertise or entertainment profit, no matter how big or how small the production company is, must be done in a way that is mutually beneficial for you and your family. Now, I can almost hear the pushback from some of you. Some of you are thinking, I don't need compensation for telling my story. I just want to get my story out there. I just want to raise awareness. Ah, you, my dear, may be susceptible to the second pitfall of sharing your story with Hollywood, and that is manipulation. I can remember when I was asked to help a production company create a casting video of myself to help pitch me to a television network. As I spoke about my medical journey, one of the producers called me 
awe-inspiring. It would be amazing, she said, to have someone as reflective and confident as you to be one of our subjects. It seemed like I would be the jewel, the crown in their TV project. And I couldn't wait. At the end of the recording session for the casting tape, the producers asked me to email them just a few pictures that really showed the disfigured side of my face. So I snapped a couple photos of me with, a, with makeup on at first. And then I decided it's better if I pull all my hair back and I take off all of my makeup so that they can see the misshapen aspects of my jaw and the missing spaces where I don't have bottom teeth. In hindsight, I realized something. As I snapped those photos of myself up close of each disfigured part of my face, I was actually working to sell myself to these entertainment executives as disabled and disfigured enough for their entertainment purposes. What made me so willing to conform to what the people producing the content wanted, even to the point of emphasizing, almost highlighting the disfigured aspects of my physical appearance? It was what most of us seemed to want most, a chance to have our story reach the masses, a, a chance to change the, the challenges we and others in our community face. Now, I could tell you about a dozen instances of experiences as a patient advocate when I was asked to share my story without any mutually beneficial arrangement because it would quote unquote raise awareness or have some other pro-social outcome. And yet, for whatever crest or awareness gained, it was often short-lived without any real change to the underlying issues and barriers that I had been convinced the world would finally pay attention to if only I would just share my story. I could also give you a list of scholarship as a narrative researcher which supports the fact that even though we gain joy and purposefulness and connection through sharing our stories, when we share them with each other, there's a contrast when we share with Hollywood. When we share for the benefits of Hollywood or any entity outside of our community, the mental and emotional cost of participation can easily outweigh whatever altruistic benefits we think we are receiving by providing TV audiences with entertainment, even if it's packaged as inspirational or as awareness. To be clear, the cost can often outweigh any potential benefits. Now, for those of you who are new to telling your story, at face value, the idea of working with Hollywood can make can seem fun and exciting, possibly even rewarding in and of itself. And if the opportunity is only requiring a very minimal amount of your time and effort, you may decide to participate just for the experience and any positive publicity that may result. However, I hope you can see from what we discussed so far that when you decide to share your lived experiences with Hollywood, you are giving them economically valuable resources. Your story and your labor are both worth proper compensation, whether that's financial or some other more creative form, like donations to charities you support, paying for health services that you need, or professional development opportunities, particularly for those who have or want a career in the entertainment industry. Finally, whatever benefits are agreed upon, you should absolutely get it 
in writing. Refuse to be manipulated. Now, on to the last hit I'll go cover. Disempowerment. Once we tell our story to Hollywood, the cold hard truth is that it's no longer ours. Gatekeepers and decision makers at the production company or the studio will decide which aspects of our story matter enough to make the final edit of the TV show, the film, the play, or whatever creative content that we're helping, helping them to create. It will all be based on catering to the audiences that they depend on to make money, not based on what matters most to us. When we sign a traditional contract with an entertainment industry company, unless otherwise stated, we are essentially giving them permission to control our narrative, to use what we share as they please. Those of us working diligently to hold Hollywood accountable as advocates and activists, researchers and creators, we believe that any time anyone in our community shares their story, it can never be truly empowering for us unless one key element is present. And that element is the one we started with earlier, equity. Equity is not simply extracting stories from you or others in our communities for some elusive idea of awareness. Equity is truly working with us and those in our community to implement actions that empower systemic changes to the status quo. This benefits us individually as well as our communities and generations to come. I don't know about you, but I no longer have the energy to lie to myself when I share my story by saying, well, at least. At least my story will get out there. Yet, I have, haven't been allowed to view any of the footage of my story. I don't know what the producers plan to include from all the footage they shot. And most importantly, I have no authority to make any editing decisions of my own. At least awareness will be gained for those of us with conditions and disabilities. Yes but at our own expense, figuratively, and sometimes literally at our expense. At least I'm being paid, except oftentimes I'm not, or definitely not enough. For me, there is no at least anymore. It is just no longer worth it for me to quote unquote share my story unless I can identify specific ways in which some tangible aspect of our lives as disabled and disfigured people will change as a result of my participation. So, you still want to share your story with Hollywood? All right. You can be careful to avoid the pitfalls of exploitation, manipulation, and disempowerment by remembering that your body, your life, and your story are worth far more than you realize. The decisions you make to become self-aware about how Hollywood really works can allow you to pursue mutually beneficial arrangements that foster a more equitable world for us all. <laughs>